Hello everybody, this is Dilshani from Literary Genius and I warmly welcome each and every one of you to the new series of lessons on Life of Pi. Uh, Life of Pi is a novel written by the Canadian writer Yan Martel about an Indian boy who gets shipwrecked and had to spend 227 days drifting across the Pacific Ocean. And what makes this story interesting is that he has to survive with, a, with an adult Bengal tiger throughout his journey, which is extremely incredible, I think. And it's amazing how the narrative unfolds. So I recommend this story to all of you, read it and enjoy it. And so this is the content of this lesson primarily, but I will be adding certain elements as we move on. Accordingly, I'd like to deal with an interesting observation made by a student. Uh, I had this student, he personally disliked the novel because he said it's not realistic enough. But that made me wonder, then what about Harry Potter? It became the most popular fantasy tale of the recent times, right? And it is outright fantasy, nothing, I don't think there's nothing uh, real about it. So why don't people like a Life of Pi which has actually elements of reality in it? I think the answer is not that difficult to find and the problem is not with the novels per se. I think it is with people who are trying to fix these, these novels in either extremes. They have two extremes. One uh, extreme is reality and the other extreme is fantasy. And when they can't fix, it in, fix this in and they, when they can't pin it down to either of these categories, they grow suspicious of the novel. And they feel that the author is trying to trick them, deceive them in some way because author keeps mixing elements of reality and fantasy in it so much to the point that it sometimes confuses the reader. And, but I think this, is, uh, this element itself is the beauty of life of Pi, this narrative. And one thing I learned from this uh, book is that sometimes imagination and fantasy could actually help us survive the ravages of reality. For example, when we start reading a book, let's say Harry Potter for that matter, we start unloading our stress, our burdens for a moment at least to immerse ourselves in this magical world of Harry Potter, uh, full of wizards, witches and magic which we don't see uh, in our day-to-day -day life, fantasy. And once we come back to the reality, we will not be the same person, our way of looking at things will be changed. Every work of art in some way affects the way we look at the world. Doing so, they prepare us to face the not so beautiful aspects of reality we live in. So I believe this is what Life of Pi does. And for me that is the reason why I like it so much. And why I recommend this to uh, all of my students and those who are watching now. And now I will highlight some basic information about this novel which is important for us to uh, discuss it further. As I already mentioned, this is written by Jan Martel and it was first published in the year 2001. And interestingly, this novel belongs to several genres. Uh, genre, as you may already know, refer to the type of the text you are studying. And we can call this basically a Bildung's Roman, which means a developmental novel. The reason being, it traces the development of Pi from a young boy into a matured adult. It can be also called an adventure fiction because from the moment the ship sinks, he has to struggle so much to survive with a Bengal tiger and, and a hyena and an orangutan and uh, the zebra. He quickly adapts to the situation and starts uh, catching fish, uh, training the tiger and on their way they come across a carnivorous island. And from the beginning of the second part to the end of it, the story becomes loaded with suspense and a sense of danger is also always there, a sense of unpredictability is al always there and these features qualify the novel to be called an adventure fiction. And on the other hand, we could also call it a memoir. I have given the me meaning of this term uh, within brackets, uh, it refers to a historical account or biography written from personal knowledge. So this story revolves around the personal life of Pi and he is looking back at his life and recounting those incidents. Uh, when we talk about the setting it starts off from Canada where the author lives and then it shifts to India then to the Pacific Ocean then to Mexico and finally 
uh, when the novel comes to its close it comes back to canada because that's the place where pai chooses to live after he was saved and we call this a frame narrative and many of us would understand this term more better if you call it a story within a story so a frame narrative is a story within another story uh, for example we have the story told to us by an anony- anonymous author and within that larger narrative told to us by the anonymous author we have pi telling us another story so that is why we call it a story within a story uh, so these are the basic information you need to know before we plunge into the analysis and i think before we move on uh, you i should give you some time to absorb this information so we will meet again with our second video lesson soon where we will discuss the author's note until then study the basics and look at the novel in a in an open mind uh, just look at the ways uh, you can just understand certain elements which i mentioned earlier fantasy reality if you read it that will be a huge advantage for you before we move on to the next segment uh, i wish you good luck and thanks for watching